you to chill. Because I got to do this live, so I'm going to need you. What's going on, people? What's going on, people? Um, conversations we carry too smooth on a Saturday. We're doing it a little differently today. Um, we had to wash the car and get some things done. So I'm answering some questions and having some conversations with you guys um, while we are in the car running some errands because uh, we got some stuff to do. So, But I'm doing these lives on Saturdays where I can connect with um, you guys to really talk about guitar-related stuff, um, guitar-related questions, anything to do with the industry. Mm -mm. And... Uh, just anything like that. So, you know, we could talk about whatever. So, shoot, shoot me in with a question. Move in the back. You stop it? You stop it? Yeah. All right. So, I almost feel like a vlogger. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, that's the purpose of this. Okay. It's just to. Um, Did you give something to the guy? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Getting the car wash. I'm not. <laughs> Listen, I had to get some detail work. But yeah, so where's everybody from? Where's everybody from? I saw we had somebody. I believe they were from Pennsylvania. Oh, Sac Sac San Antonio. Based on your poll, what do you consider yourself an intermediate player? All right, so if you're trying to figure out, like, if you're trying to consider yourself an intermediate player, it's not about how many years you've been with the instrument. It's about your playing ability. I, I get you know, pose with this question a lot of times, people are trying to figure out like, you know, if I'm intermediate, if I'm beginner, I'm advanced, like how does that work? It's not about how many years you've had with the instrument. That does not equate if you're intermediate or advanced. It's about your actual knowledge of the instrument and how well you can play. So let that kind of like be like an, a little bit of assessment for you, like your knowledge, like do you know the notes on the neck of the guitar? Can you play a basic progression? If I said, you know, um, various numbers do you know the number system that's kind of like an intermediate way of kind of un being able to understand exactly where you are when it comes to like your knowledge of the guitar new york norway up in the house alabama roll tie india british columbia what's up good morning from arlington texas what's up what's, what's up what is the piece of gear you've gotten the most value out of over the last 10 years huh I would say a tuner. You cannot negate having a good tuner. Um, I like the TC electronic tuner um, because when I look down, I just want to be able to see like quick reference, see the, the letters. Am I in tune or I'm not in tune? I don't like the boss where you got to look at the light and try to, if I'm like on stage and I got to do whatever, like you can't, you, you can't go without a, having a good tuner. So for me, I like having a great tuner. So and that's what I would say. Also, um, having a good solid guitar I would say like finding the right guitar that you can actually spend time the thing is I, I, I have a lot of excuse me guitars and what I've understood over the period of time is that you can't spend the time with one to one and you can really grow with it I have so many guitars that I've like I use for different studio sessions or different kind of uh, tours or whatever but I find that there's like maybe one or two that I found are like my favorite guitars and right now it happens to be uh, my Fender Strat that's laced with Lambertone pickups. Um, it's an HSS kind of setup. And I feel like right now that that's the guitar. I mean, I find myself going back. I've played other types of guitar, but I find myself going to that um, guitar. Oklahoma in the house. South Carolina's in the house. Philly's in the house. Thoughts on the Nile pedal? pedal. I like it. I mean, it was a great sustained pedal. I played it and I demoed it a couple times when I was with Vertex um, when I went to their shop. So um, anything that Vertex usually makes for the most part is a solid pedal. And I'm not just talking about like um, dur durability wise. I'm talking about like actual playability, what it feels like, what it sounds like, what it can actually do. So that's one of those things right there. So South African house, Tokyo. What's up? Yeah, Mississippi. Any advice for improving blues, soloing, and vibrato at two years of playing so i would say about vibrato you don't want to overdo it like when you're doing vibrato on the strings i know so many people try to have like crazy vibrato with the strings you got to be careful not to do that um also with blues blues is about a feeling and emotion when you're playing so like don't be so caught up in like trying to play the right notes in the progression like be more intentional about like the feeling that's behind the records when you're playing like play with soul like especially when you're doing your solos 
take time to have the story, to tell the story with your instrument. Like, don't feel like I gotta play blues a certain kind of way, a lot of different notes. Take time to tell the story. Like, B.B. King was really um, good for that, taking like a couple different notes and really like allowing his guitar to tell the story. That's what I would say focus on. What would you recommend a Simo Hollow or Strat for gospel? Gospel, I would say a Strat. Simi Hollow is just, it's a unique guitar that's only for specific songs, I feel like. But if you're gonna play gospel, you definitely need to have a Strat. You can't go wrong with a Strat for a lot of multiple different genres. A Strat is a very versatile guitar. What types of strings do you like? I like Diodarios. Um, I believe it's EX117. It's like whatever the, it's a blue pack with orange around it. And I like tens. That's my favorite set of strings. Um, I carry too smooth. Should I learn harmon harmonizing lead lines for every inter interval individual? No, you don't. I don't think you should definitely do that because you're not asked to play those types of lines. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do that. I mean, it's cool thing if you're just trying to do that on your own but if you're playing behind somebody i don't think it's necessarily important all right knowing what you know now advice would you give um to move to la all right so right now with the pandemic going on or whatever and there's not really a lot of work transpiring um i don't know if moving to la is the right is a smart move right now um the thing about moving to la is if you want to try to like get on with artists and play behind TV shows and do stuff like that. If that's a desire of your heart, then LA is a place for you. Now understand it's not going to be easy, right? I made the move to LA like seven years ago um, because that was a desire of my heart. I wanted to try my hand and see if I was, if I lined up with the best of everybody else in the world, could I do it? Could I play at the highest level? Could I play for like artists that everybody knew the name of? Could I play um, your top pop gigs, your top R&B gigs, could I do it? And I'm telling you, like, now that I've done it, like, you got to have money saved up because it's a long, it takes a long time to get on. And it's the cost of living out here in L.A. is super expensive. Like, you have to get yourself um, prepared to possibly have roommates if you've never had roommates before. Living in situations that you may not necessarily want, it's not glamorous. Like, you literally, like, if you do tours, you're not on tour the whole entire year. You're, like, on tour for a short period of time. Um, TV dates, you have to wait for money to come in. It's a lot of stuff that behind the scenes that you got to realize and understand. There's a lot of different cliques out here in LA. What if you don't get in the right circles with everybody else? It could be extremely challenging. So you really have to count up the cost if that's something you desire, you really want to do. Um, I would suggest it if for people that really want to do it, people that are younger, that don't have that many like uh, responsibilities because it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's really tough. Um, since I've been here, man, like the turnaround rate when I when before the pandemic was like six months for guys to get here and just be like, you know what, man, I'm done. I can't do it. It's it's harder than what I thought. It's a lot more than what I wanted to do. It's a lot more of an investment, you know, so you really have to count the cost because you're really going to have to sacrifice a lot in order to try to get it on. And then you may never get on. That's one of the other things. Just because you move here, just because you're talented, just because everybody likes you doesn't mean that you'll necessarily get on and get a job and start working. Um, it's just one of those things, man. So you just got to count up the cost. So I would tell anybody that's planning on moving out here to LA, moving to New York or whatever city that you feel like moving to, do your research. Um, go check out the city beforehand. Like, see what the cost of living is. See how much money you need to have saved. I would save up for a year, man. And just really stack bread and make sure that when I get there, it takes a minute to get on. And then understand when you're playing at the professional level, you're playing behind a lot of these different artists. It's not like at your local level where you do a gig and they give you a check right after the show. You're gonna have to do invoices. It may take you uh, two weeks, a month, two months for you to get your paychecks. You have to be able to sustain yourself. So it's really not about just like, oh man, I got a song on the radio. It takes a while for you to get your money. So like, you have to understand like, it's really just counting up the cost and see if it's even worth it. That's one of the things I would tell you to think about. All right. Is a solid state amp for old schoolers? Nah, man, not at all. Like, I don't consider myself an old schooler. I play both. If I had to choose a, a gig or whatever, like what I, what I would want for a gig, depending on what type of gig is, I'm, I love my quilter. Like you give me a quilter mini reverb one-on-one, uh, one -on -one, I will definitely rock that before I will rock a lot of solid states. I mean, rock rock a lot of tube amps just because again of the tonal quality that it gives me. I like light stuff. I'm not trying to carry around no heavy tube amp anymore. Them days is over with. Plus all tube amps don't sound great. It ain't even, it's overrated.
right? The tone is in your hands. You can adjust to do whatever you got to do to find the sweet spot. I do it all the time. You know, you just got to be intentional and you got to ask yourself like, okay, this might take me 20 minutes to find it, but once I get it, it's, it's on and cracking. Or it might not even take you 20 minutes. You just got to put the time and attention to detail in, in there to get this done. All right. Uh, which production software do you prefer? I prefer Logic. I mean, a lot of times when I'm playing and I'm producing at bigger studios, they would necessarily use Pro Tools. And I'm not, you know, opposed to Pro Tools, but like for my own personal use, I like Logic. Now, I know there's a lot of different um, guys that I do like some local stuff with that have their own home setup. They like Ableton because uh, they're able to do a whole bunch of dope, dope stuff with Ableton. I'm not uh, proficient in Ableton right now, so I don't really use Ableton. So I love Logic, but Ableton is, I mean, all of them are really dope. You just got to find whatever is user-friendly for you that you know how to navigate, you know how to use properly, and then and that's it. You know what I mean? Maine is in the house. Okay, let's go back and look at some of these. Hope that everything is good with you during the difficult times. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate that. Like, yeah, it's, it's definitely some trying times that are going on in the world. Um... But I'm staying safe, man, and um, I'm definitely affected by everything that I see. So, like, you know, I just, I just want us all to come together, man. That's really my biggest thing. Just understand, like, that we gotta learn how to love each other and respect each other. You know what I'm saying? Racism is a very real thing, and there are a lot of people that are crying out. And then for people that are not people of color, like, don't be so quick to run to judgment, rush to judgment when it comes to you see people reacting in such a way. There's so many years of oppression. I think about when I was even in the army and we went over to Iraq and I, we had to go do various things and I, like my heart went out for those people because they got so many years of being, you know, oppressed and we would have to do various things and that like they were reacting such a way and I get it now, you know what I'm saying? I understand it in a whole different level. So I'm just asking everybody just to use like, just to think, you know what I'm saying? Don't rush to judgment, like try to understand and then like, you know, let's, let's all try to like love and, and work together because the way things are going right now, man, it's probably just going to get worse before it gets better because people don't feel like they're being heard. When people don't feel like they're being heard, man, it, it just, that's a tough place. That's a tough place to be. You know what I mean? Cool. What's a good affordable affordable strat recommended? So if you're, you're around like the $300, $600 range, I would tell you to go look at some good Mexican strats, right? But what I would do is I would gut the pickups. I would upgrade the pickups i'm a huge fan of lambertone pickups but there are a lot of different pickup companies out there like go on youtube and actually listen to demos of different pickups they're lawlers they're porters um pickups i would listen to the different kind of pickups get you a, a mexican strat find one that feels really comfortable you upgrade the pickups and then like bam you got like a high-end guitar automatically already Cool. Okay, okay, okay. I'm trying to read all these questions. Y'all got some good stuff. Are you able to play all genres with Lambertone pickups? Yes. I can do pop gigs. I can do singer songwriter gigs. I can do R&B gigs. I don't play country, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you could. You can do country with those pickups. They're very versatile. Um, I never put my name behind something that I don't really believe that can do all the things because I, I get asked to do a lot of different uh, things, whether it be production wise or whether it be me playing for artists. And I need something that's extremely versatile. So Lambertone pickups are very versatile. Thanks for the lesson. They help greatly. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. About a year and a half ago, I took a phone call and you gave me confidence to get a job. A year and a half later, I'm up for the minute. Oh, man, dude, Arnold, that's what's up, bro. Like, that's seriously, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Love hearing that stuff. What's your opinion on a seven-string guitar? Like, for me, I don't necessarily uh, have an opinion, yay or nay. I'm just saying uh, most seven-strings that I've seen are usually used for, like, heavy metal. Um, that's not really my genre. Not really. I can't really speak on it for r and I don't know if it would be effective. I, in my opinion, I don't think it would be. But, you know to each his own if you find you're able to do it and then I, I say go for it you know what I'm saying
Oh, I'm sorry, man. We just, we out here living our best life. You know what I mean? Like, out here living our best life. Oh, so dramatic. I'm just saying, you about to break my neck up here. My wife over here, she driving. Uh, say what's up to the people. Hi. Oh God. <laughs> My rogue dog. Horrible. I'm going to sit in here and finish up. Okay. Do you want anything? Um, give me peanut butter and uh, jelly. Jelly? Yeah. Or just a regular? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, all right. Let's go back and look at some of these other questions. Talking about pedals with overdrive and reverb. Suffice for a beginner. All right, so if you're a beginner and you're talking about pedals or whatever, like I would say you need to get a tuner. You need to get, definitely get an overdrive pedal. You need to get um, a reverb and I say delay. Those are like some essential pedals to have when you first start playing and kind of build out your pedal board. There's so many different types. So I would say whatever you get, get those, um, get a pedal that you can kind of like, you can grow with realize that your taint your, your your sound and your toning is going to change over the years i've bought in so much stuff um until you find exactly what you like so i mean you could be like oh carrie plays this or such and such plays this i should get that that doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're going to like or the tone is going to be what you want you got to find something that's going to suit what you're looking for all right um Glass and mash and guitar are really open now. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, a great pedal for looping. I see a lot of my friends using the Ditto. So I would say the Ditto is kind of a cool pedal that you want to use for looping. That's what I would suggest. Um, carry it. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's go back and let's look at all these. Some good stuff. Man, so many good questions. I'm trying to go through and see like some of the stuff, people asking some of the same things. I'm trying to make sure I do answer some of the different ones. Okay. Any tips for learning fingering style on electric? Yeah, um, th my tip would be like, try to focus on, even if you have to look down at the strings, look down at the strings and there's a, a sensitivity that you gotta have whenever you play, right? It's tone is everything. So you have to be careful not to be so aggressive when you're playing your electric and with some of your strings. And then also you gotta to know like when to be aggressive, like to pop your strings a little bit when it comes to fingering style or whatever when you're playing. So just be really intentional about the way that you play and how you play. All right, when you see a video of someone playing guitar on the internet, what are some of the first things you notice them about? All right, so notice, notice about them. When I'm, I, I listen first and then I'll look and see what kind of guitar they're playing I'll see what if there's any kind of techniques that they're using, if they're like if they're, if they're using overdrive or if it's clean or if it's any kind of chorus on it. I, I listen for all of those different things and I see their overall expression. Like, are they having fun doing what they're doing? Like, are they I could tell if they're beginner or intermediate or if they've been doing this for a while. I look at all of those different things. It's like watching game film for me when I watch other people play guitar um, on the Internet. It's because I've been doing it for such a long time. I analyze everything. I go back and I rewatch, especially something catches my ear. I'd be like, oh, man, that was a sweet move. Or I'm like, mm, I don't know if I would have played that chord. I like that chord progression. Maybe I could change this up. And if I'm inspired, it may make me grab my guitar and start playing. You never know. I says, what do I need to practice to sound more melodic when I'm playing? I would say practice with records where like you know the lyrics of the song, right? And then practice like playing those lines when you when you hear the song. Because if you know the song, you know the song. So practice 
playing those lines in while you're playing, that's going to help you become more melodic. It's going to help you start thinking about more sing song lines. Think about different melodies when you're playing, like da na 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 na, like when you're playing. So you're like on the guitar, like da na, like you start thinking of different lines. You listen to records you know, listen to catchy melodies are going to help you start to be more melodic in your playing. Do you have any endorsement gigs? Yes, I have plenty of endorsements, right? When it comes to endorsements, endorsements are relationships that you need to have with the brand. You need to develop, you you are a brand number one, right? And you gotta help another brand sell their brand. So it's a partnership. They're not just gonna send you anything just because you're super talented and you can play your guitar. If you don't have a platform that you have the audience to try to reach a lot of different people, then part, companies are apprehensive to partner with you. And it's not just about you being a, a really great player. You have to be a good person. It's about um, a relationship, right? So you have to think about it. Like, number one, you're a brand. Two, you have to establish a relationship with that brand in order for them to send you stuff. And they're not going to always send you free stuff. So endorsements are not free stuff. Sometimes they may send you a percentage. They may be like, oh, we give you 40%, 30%, 60%, whatever, off of whatever we do. Or what I've learned in the past, what I used to do a lot of times when I was coming up in the game, I would just tell them, like, yo, I'll demo for you when I was trying to get on just to like establish a relationship or I would buy the product and be like, yo, I already got your product. I would love to do some demo videos for you. Matter of fact, I've already done a couple. Let me sing you something. So instead of me having my hand out, I'm giving them something. So a lot of brands are more apt if you give them something or you talk about like, yo, I'll demo for you. And then like when you have events like NAM, right? I don't know what's gonna happen like because of this pandemic, but when you have stuff like NAM, go find those brands and create like, you know, working relationships, you know, like, I don't know if people are going to shake hands in, for a while, but like just go meet them in person, form those relationships. That's how you're going to help build the brands and so that people feel confident. They know exactly who you are and that way they can build stuff with you. Just realize an endorsement is not people friending you, sending you free stuff. That's 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 not the case. It's about they may give you a percentage. It's about you. How can you as a person, as a brand, help build their brand and, and bring awareness to the company? Do you think six hours of daily practice is too much um, of a workload? Nah, it just depends. Everybody doesn't need six hours. Like when we're on tour rehearsal, we do 14 hour days. Sometimes we do like six hour days. Sometimes we may do a four hour day. It just depends what you're practicing for and, and what you're trying to look to accomplish. So if you're practicing for six hours, but you're not really gaining any ground, then yeah, it's useless time. But if you're practicing for six hours and you're really making some headway, I, I say it's, it's all warranted. You know what I mean? What pickup configuration do you think would be better uh, for one to play for fingering style instead of? I mean, innocent, honestly, like it doesn't matter the pickup configuration. It's the technique that you use with your fingers. So it doesn't matter if it's an HSS, if it's three single coils, if it's two humbuckers, if it's P90s, it doesn't matter what kind of, kind of pickup configuration. It's just the technique that you use with your hands. Nice mask. Thanks, thanks. Do you do workshops outside of your hometown? Yes. Uh, so how that works is uh, you can reach out to support at carry 2 smoothcom and um, you get with my team and then we can, we can negotiate all of those different kind of logistics um, later on, but yeah, I've done plenty of workshops. I, I even went to London to teach, um, at ACM. Um, I've done workshops all over. So like that, I do that plenty all the time. All right. I'm gonna take a few more questions and then I'm gonna let y'all enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Cause I have a lot of things to do today. Um, as you can see, we're out and about, um, running a few errands, um, picking up a few things and packing and getting ready for this move, you know what I'm saying? All right, come on, I need one more, one more good one. All right, what scales do you use to create boot up licks? What scale did I use? Boot up lick. I think I merged, because I'm trying to remember boot up the melody in my head. I think I merged part of the, the minor pentatonic and I use some elements from the major scale, right? But I was listening to the actual melody of what they were sing, singing in the song, what LMA was singing in the song. And then I used that in order to kind of develop um, the actual lick that I was going to use. 
Oh, man, appreciate it, appreciate it. One more question, and then I'm going to let y'all go for your great Saturday. Have a good one. Be safe. Stay masked up. Social distancing. All right, it says, do all your guitarists have tremolo bars? No. <laughs> uh, I have a Strat that does not have a tremolo bar. Um, I have a, a Jazz Master that I don't use a tremolo bar on. I've got a uh, 335 that doesn't have a tremolo bar on it. So no, not all my guitars have tremolo bars on it. That is a personal preference that I like to play with one, but I don't have it on all my guitars. Man, I appreciate you guys and thank you guys so much for um, joining uh, today's conversation with Carrie Too Smooth. Like I said, again, this is something that I'm going to try to do um, on Saturdays just to connect with you guys. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do so. Click the bell to be notified. Um, also, um, you can follow me on Instagram. I do. I post a lot of stuff on Instagram. Um, it's at Carrie Too Smooth. I post a lot of guitar videos. And just a lot of different kind of things like that, whatever. And also share, you know, this page with people, with some of your friends and some of your homies, especially during this downtime, you know. They'd be like, if you want to learn guitar, if you're trying to figure out how to learn how to play, yo, yo, he's doing free giveaways on the videos where he's talking about all information that most cats don't give away. He's giving away a lot of knowledge, a lot of information. Do that. That's what I, I, I try to do. I try to give people stuff that a lot of, like, you know, guitars keep close to the vest. So how do y'all do this? How do you do this? How do you do this chord? I'm showing you a whole bunch of stuff like that. Also, if you're looking to try to do an even deeper dive, if you're 18 years or younger, ask your parents before you go to this website. But my website is K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. It's an online guitar community where we're helping people really learn and how to understand how to play guitar without any limitations to really unlock their full potential. That's really what it's all about. It's called Carrie's Cam. And just to see the maturation of a lot of guitarists who just started to where they are now and they're continuing to grow in their craft. That's what it's all about. So um, check those things out, man. Love you guys. You guys stay safe, man. Remember, love each other. It's, it's tough in the world, man, but we can love each other, man. That's what it's all about. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great one, man. Stay up. Stay safe.